I decided to make a series of videos discussing questions asked on electronic engineering interviews. I have collected these questions from job interviews which I attended myself. Usually you as the candidate will be given a list of questions to answer within a set period of time which can be as short as 30 minutes. Later, a panel of two to three experienced engineers will sit and discuss the answers with you. The trick is not to panic. You don't need to answer all the questions correctly. The panel will try to determine the depth of knowledge in the field that you possess and your general interest level. The questions are designed to test basic knowledge of electronics. You won't be required to derive complicated mathematical expressions. So relax and make sure you know the fundamentals well. In this first part of the video series, I'll go through questions on RC circuits which usually come up first. Questions on RC circuits are very common and easy to answer, so make sure you study them thoroughly. First up are these two very simple RC circuits. Each circuit has two components, a resistor and a capacitor. The input and output nodes are clearly labeled. They are V in and V out. The input waveforms to the circuits are square waves. Square waves are very important test signals as they are a source of many frequencies. By observing what these circuits do to the shape of a square wave, deductions can be made about how the circuit will respond to low and high frequencies. You'll notice that there are no values specified for the resistor and capacitors in the circuits. In this case, we are only interested in sketching the approximate output waveforms generated by these circuits. Let's sketch the output waveform of the first circuit. Viewers will recognize this as a simple RC low pass filter. It will smooth out the edges of the square wave. The output of the circuit will look like this. The output will rise and fall exponentially. Depending on the time constant, which is given by the product of the resistor and the capacitor, the rise and fall times will vary. The next circuit is an RC high pass filter. This circuit is a bit tricky and quite surprisingly a lot of electronic engineers fail to draw the output waveform of this circuit. This circuit is a differentiator so it will pass the edges uh, of the square wave so the output waveform will be spiky, the spikes corresponding to the edges of the square wave. The output waveform will look like this. I will encourage interested viewers to simulate these circuits in SPICE and look at the output waveforms uh, when you apply square waves as input. Try varying the characteristics of the input square wave test, test signal and the value of the resistor and capacitor and look at the effect on the shape of the output waveform when these changes are made. Next, let's look at these two circuits. They're very similar to the previous two circuits, except we now have one extra component. Let's look at the first circuit. We have an extra shunt resistor. Experienced viewers will recognize these two resistors as forming a voltage divider. So the output waveform V out will um, have half the amplitude of the input waveform but otherwise the shape of the output waveform will resemble the output uh, shape of a typical RC low pass filter. Assuming that 
these two resistors are equal, the output of the circuit uh, will look like this. In the next circuit we have an extra capacitor and this capacitor in addition with this capacitor forms a capacitive divider. Otherwise this circuit is very similar to a RC high pass filter. Assuming these two capacitors are equal in value, the output um, waveform will have uh, half the amplitude of the input waveform. The output will look like this. I will strongly encourage viewers to simulate these circuits in SPICE and confirm the output waveform shapes. Play around with the values of the capacitors and the resistors and look at the effect on the shape of the output waveforms. There can be many different types of RC circuits, but the examples that I've covered in this video are most likely to come up uh, during the interview. This concludes the first part of the video series on electronic engineering interview questions. Interested viewers can connect with me uh, through my LinkedIn account and can also follow me on Twitter. All the details are uh, provided in the description of the video. Feel free to leave comments and suggestions. Thanks for watching.